Hi, this is Mark Weitzman. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Theoretical Physics with Mark Weitzman. I want to finish the, um, the third part of the video four on the um, short course in um, Shenanstead's book. This time I want to go over a little bit more carefully projection operators. So, um, Nested briefly in our course, she gave an example of sort of how it was used. She defined a um, operator, a uh, function, this which was um, around the um, had support around each of the vertices, and this function basically rotates with the rotation operators, but doesn't do anything with the reflection operators. So because of that, it didn't give the full, uh, it was an easy example, and she showed how the three functions, you know, here, here, and here, under the rotation operators, transform into each other, and how this can be, um, you know, if you define new functions, you can get, and this comes from the projection operators, but she doesn't mention it there, and you can get sort of two um, irreducible representations, the one-dimensional irreducible representation and the two-dimensional irreducible representation, gamma 1, which is the trivial representation, and gamma 3, which is the two-dimensional representation. And But it doesn't have anything with this representation in the group. This is also an irreducible representation. So it turns out that... I'll show you how we can do that, but it's a more complicated example. But let me just go to the definition. The projection operators are defined in addendum A. If we have a irreducible unitary representation of all the group operators, then the projection operators, we define them as being rho. The superscript I refers to which irreducible representation we're taking the projection operator. And M and M prime are the um, matrix indices, assuming we have a matrix. You know, if we have a one-dimensional matrix, these two indices are like trivial and don't matter. So it's a sum of all the operators in the group. We take the irreducible, we take the representation that we're um, projecting, um, and we take its matrix elements, we take the complex conjugates. This won't factor into us because all of our things are real, but they're also unitary representations, so we can apply this formula. And then multiply it by the group operation, operator. So this is how you get the, um, yeah, gamma i is, these are the irreducible representation matrices. You get the coefficients from these matrices, so you would go like over here, Oh, I'm sorry. Let me go back. You would go like over here, like if you were using gamma 3, then you would take this gamma 3, 1, 1 times C, minus 1 half times C, 1 times E, minus 1 half times C bar, etc. So you're using the matrices of the irreducible representation. And this gives um, projection operators when you apply these projection operators to a function, you're going to get functions which transform as a set of partners in the basis for the irreducible representation. So the columns, the columns of these things, mm, m being a row index and m prime being a column index, will turn out the columns of these indices all transform into each other. And um, so they're a set of partner functions or a basis for that um, sp sets of special symmetry functions. So I just want to now show you a more um, complicated example I did using some computer algebra software. So here's how you can do it. First of all, we need how these uh, the mappings, we have the mappings on the plane. Remember, we have that triangle and points get mapped into points. So E is just the identity element. That doesn't change any points. We only have X and Y coordinates. 
C is a counterclockwise rotation. You get this from your usual, I'm sorry, C is a clockwise rotation. You get this from your usual clockwise rotations that you learned in elementary physics and everything or mathematics. And this is the matrix for a 120 degrees clockwise rotation. You can check that all these matrices are orthogonal and they have determinant one for rotations. Orthogonal means a, a, a matrix X is orthogonal if X transpose X equals the identity. And that will be the case for these matrices. The reflections will have determinant equal to minus one. That's how you'll differentiate. Anyway, this is, I should have put a bar on top of the C. I didn't do that. I just wrote CB for C bar. This is a counterclockwise rotation of 120 degrees. It just has the angles uh, negative of those. This is the matrix for a counterclockwise rotation. The reflection around the um, y-axis is very easy. It just turns x to minus x and y is unchanged. So that's this one this matrix, sigma 1. Sigma 2 and sigma 3 are a little harder to get, but you can verify that these are them, and you can just use some geometry to get these. It's not hard to get reflection matrices. Anyway, you can also just check that it works, and you can check that it's orthogonal and has determinant minus 1. That guarantees it's a reflection. So that's sigma 2, and that's sigma 3. Now, the example I chose is I take a function f, which is x plus x cubed plus squared plus x cubed. My hope is this won't have any particular symmetry, so it will include all three representations, all three irreducible representations, and we'll see that that's in fact correct. Now the first thing I'm doing is I'm just calculating the action of a clockwise rotation on the point p, x, y. So Remember that when we apply the mappings, we use the inverse of the uh, group element. You know, we, we go from a point, and then we go back to where it came from. So we have to use the inverse mapping. So this uses CB, counterclockwise rotation, applied to XY. So X goes to minus X over 2 minus square root of 3 over 2, Y over 2, square root of 3 over 2, Y, and Y goes to square root of 3 over 2, X minus Y over 2. So this is um, that which tells me what point I should apply the function using the inverse mapping. And then the clockwise rotation applied to the function is just x, y. Don't worry about expands or simplifies. They're just to get it in a nice form. But I apply the function. I say CP1 is over here. It's the top entry of the, uh, of the column matrix. And CP2 is the bottom. So... This is, this is basically the new x, x prime, and y prime. I probably should have used that, but that's okay. And then, um, so that gives me the function, and then I apply it to x, y to see what the real function is. And you can see it's got about nine terms. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It has all terms in, mixed polyno in polynomials of x, y up to degree three with no constant terms. Now, um, to do the other one, it's the same thing. For the counterclockwise thing, I just do the reverse. Now I apply the clockwise rotation to x, y, and then I get the counterclockwise applied, and I get something similar, but with, you can see some sign differences, plus here, minus there, and so on. So I get another polynomial. Then I do the reflection ones. The reflection ones, you know, on they're, they're their own inverse, so you don't have to worry about it screwing up that. So this is the simple reflection around the y-axis. As I said, it's very simple. And then you get a function. This is that function. And then the reflection around the two-axis with the triangle, it's, we've seen it before. And uh, so it's, it's this transformation, and we get another function with nine terms. Sigma 3, we, we get another function with nine terms. Now, the projection operators, row 1 is just, we use the one-dimensional um, representation, which is just all 1s. So it's just 1 times f plus cf plus cbf, sigma 1f, sigma 2f, sigma 3f. 
It's that when you add up all these functions, and this is the advantage of using, you know, a computer algebra system, is that you don't have to do an awful lot of uh, calculating and make mistakes. The computer does it for you. And you get 3x squared plus 3y squared. And obviously this thing is um, invariant under all the group operators as we expect because, you know, x squared plus y squared is just the distance from the origin and all of the group operators are rotations or reflections and they don't change the distance from the origin. So this is good. This is just 3r squared if we write it in uh, polar coordinates. Now row two, this is the, the two dimension, the, the second, not the two, this is the second one dimensional representation, which has ones for all the identity and rotations, but minus ones for the reflections. So now I get F plus CF plus CBF minus sigma, 1F minus sigma, 2F minus sigma, 3F. And when you simplify it all, you get this function. Now, the interesting thing about this function is that if you plot it, it has the symmetry that you need, but it's, it's not that easy to see. You can work it out, and I did work it out to check it, and I'll show you that a little bit later. But um, this is, um, this is the, the function. This, is a, this function has the right representation under the, one, under the second one-dimensional representation. And you can see... For instance, if you were to, um, under sigma 2, it should go into minus itself, and x goes to minus x, that will give a negative, and x cubed goes to minus x cubed. So that, that's a simple check. But you can substitute in the other transformations and see, and this function will always be the same. So that's um, a nice thing we can, we can see. Now... Um, For um, the two-dimensional representation, which I am um, designating the first number here as 3, corresponding to the order, this is the three-dimensional representation, gamma 3. It's actually a two-dimensional representation. Here it is. And we can form the um, projection operators, you know, here. Um, so, for instance, the first one, 1-1 one, one element, we would have e minus one half c minus one half c bar minus sigma one plus one half sigma two plus one half sigma three and that's what i have right down here and then when you do that and simplify you get this function all right nothing then then when you continue doing this for all the other functions you get more functions so you're going to get four functions all together and I'll show you in a second. I know it's confusing with the worksheet. Just as a check, I put the coefficients of all the polynomials for the six functions. These are the six functions that I got on projections, and these are the polynomial terms. Like this is x, y, uh, x squared, x, y, y squared, you know, x, y squared, uh, I'm sorry, x cubed, x, y, x squared, y, x, y squared, y cubed. And I took the rank of the matrix, and it's 6. So these functions are all independent. Now, let's go look at these functions. Okay, start over here. I wrote down two of them. f of x, y is the defining thing. x plus x squared plus x cubed. Um, Cf, I, I didn't write down, but I wrote down c bar f. I didn't complete these things. But if I show you the projection functions, this is row 1. This is what we said is invariant. This is row 2, which has this funny thing that it's invariant under rotations, and it goes into negative itself under reflections. And then this is row 3, 1, 1, and row 3, 2, 1. So this is a um, let's see, 1, 1, and 2, 1. So this is the first column of the projection matrix acting on the functions. And you get these functions these over here. And interestingly enough, these do transform as partner pairs. If you were to like substitute a coordinate coordinates in here, a coordinate change in F1, then you would find that it's equal to um, you know, this it would be like let's say under under a rotation, it would be minus one half 
f1 plus the square root of 3 over 2 f2. So it does indeed work that these the two of these are partner pairs and these two are partner pairs. And um, so the first column and the second form part, set of partner pairs and the second column form a set of partner pairs that both transform under the two-dimensional um, irreducible representation. So this is a more complicated example. I was, um, I had a hard time coming up with this function, you know. I mean, that's why I did this calculation. I was trying to think of a function that's even under the rotations, but odd under the reflections. And um, this one does it, but it's not easy under 120 degree rotations. It's not end under the reflections associated with those sides. But it's not easy to see that this works, but it it actually does work. And um, I'll show you some of the calculations that I did. Okay, so these were the calculations that I did where I'm saying like, you know, let's check this function that it uh, transforms right under... Uh, under gamma 2 and um, you can see like I took under C bar I took F2 of the transform coordinates and um, so I got this function so that didn't change under C again F2 of the transform coordinates didn't change but under sigma 2 when I put the transform coordinates in it went into minus itself which is, which is what it's supposed to because again remember this gamma 2 one 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 for rotations and the identity element, but minus one minus one minus one for rotations, and then under sigma three, same thing. And then I checked uh, on this worksheet. I won't go through it here, but I checked the partner pairs, and I got something. Either I have a sign error, or it's only an equivalent representation, or maybe that has an error in the book, and we should be using. Well, I don't think she has an error. These are definitely partner pairs. The columns. But something is a little bit, either it's an equivalent representation or so it doesn't have to be the exact representation. Anyway, I didn't do all the calculations, but you can go ahead and do them. And um, so that will, um, that will finish the, um, this video four. That's the third part of video four. And then the only thing left I have to do in a short course is lecture four on applications to quantum mechanics. And I think there'll be um, a little bit, easier to understand. Remember, Shenzhen's book is about like 350 pages, and she devotes about 60 pages to the short course. The long course does all of this in much more detail, proves everything, and also extends it greatly to, um, you know, other groups like, you know, continuous groups and all the things with elementary particles in terms of like QCD and color and various things like that. So there's a lot to look ahead but you have to it's a lot more math you have to do things like the Frobenius algebra and then young diagrams and various things and I'll I will start on that after I finish the short course but if you like the short course didn't really like wasn't exhaustive so it was just a brief introduction and there might be parts of it you might not understand when the long course starts all of this will be repeated and done in more detail and extended. So thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.